Hey everybody, Barry here again. Oh, back at the truck. It's been uh, it's been a little while for me. I know the videos have been continuous because I have been scheduling them continuously. But I uh, I took a couple week break, and um, I'm uh, I'm kind of back at it a little bit. And you'll see outside, man, it's beautiful. This is. Today is October 24th. Now I know this video is gonna be coming out a little bit later than that because I've been trying to keep on top of scheduling and not have big breaks between videos and then have a bunch all in a row. Okay then, it's cold out. There we go. And uh, I've been trying to keep everything consistent because winter is usually a little bit slower for me. But I do have some updates. So let's pull this junk inside, see what we're gonna do. So as you may or may not be able to see, we've been busy with boat stuff. That is all. Actually, I wasn't even going to show anything on this because I, I hate boats, but I learned some stuff and some things. So this, this is a boat. This is Craig's boat. There's the other, other part of Craig's boat. It's called a Peterborough. It's, it's a boat. Yep. So anyway, all that wasn't there. That's, that was all gone. None of that was there. So we put in three quarter plywood, double layered for the back, transom or something it's called. Anyway, so we fixed that and fiberglassed it, put in a whole new keel top and bottom, all that stuff. And I fiberglassed all that in. I would like to thank Matt Fifield for coming in and showing Craig and I how to do this because I've never touched fiberglass in my life. I've smeared Bondo on rocker panels to pass inspection, but nothing to this extent. And uh, look what happened. It ain't perfect, but it'll work. Definitely pretty, but it's going to be covered by a nice thick piece of three-quarter plywood, and you'll never see it again. So, uh, yeah, I learned how to do fiberglass. And the very second that I laid down the first sheet and smeared that resin over it, besides being high as a kite, which we've got a big door here, so it wasn't that bad, but uh, fiberglass. Fiberglass. I want to do fiberglass things because I got to start my daughter's truck. She's got a 56, very similar to the rat rod, but she wants it painted. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's a good hood for her truck. That's 57 hood, but whatever. There's two good fenders for her truck. This is actually her grill. Those are her doors. The back fenders are hers. So if I can make those things out of fiberglass, then I will have a very light truck. And, uh, and I can try to paint it patina, you know, that kind of thing. I'll do the best I can because fiberglass ain't going to rust. It's not going to patina. It's not going to weather. And, uh, yeah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's, that's projects for later. Right now, I'm going to do something extremely Australian. And by Australian, I mean dose pipes. And if nobody's ever heard of that, it makes Supras go doo -doo 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 -doo, instead of psh. Because I don't really, really like the sound of blow off valves. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make things inefficient uh, just for the sound. And if we know anything about Australia, Australia is basically a DLC for an end of the world video game. They, they're absolutely nuts. And Jess, yeah, I'm talking about you. You do some really cool stuff. So when you show me that video of a dose pipe, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it for a laugh. And I have two turbos, so that means two dose pipes. So that means double. I don't know. Let's try it. So here is the blow-off valve. When it's running, it opens this gate, pulls air in through here. When you floor it, this closes, builds boost. And when you let off, vacuum pulls this valve open and goes psh, and lets all your boost out here. I'm gonna block that off so it doesn't happen. Let's try to do this one-handed while holding the phone. Ooh, it worked. So here's the blow-off valve. Here's the plunger that, oh, look, it's spring activated. Yep. When vacuum pulls on this, it pulls that open, air comes out. We don't want that. And here is the assembly. Top cap with your vacuum fitting on it. Here's your spring that holds it closed. And here is the plunger with its cute little dart. Oh, I broke it. Hmm. 
Ah, fixed. Okay, that's good. Now, uh, I need to stop that from opening. So here we have our top piece, and I found a rubber bushing that actually fits this, like, extremely well. And I think if I put that on there, upside down, I think if I put that on there, and then, oh yeah, this might work. It's going to be not very easy to compress. Let's get my little screws ready so I don't smack myself in the face with it. Oh yeah, that is going to hold it. Oh no, it won't let it close. Darn. Uh, I also, I would suggest nipping all of your anodized parts in a vise with steel jaws. For aesthetics. Stay. If it will allow it to close, that would be super duper cool, man. It wants to. <clears throat> Work. I don't plan on leaving it like this. But if it sounds cool, I absolutely plan on leaving it like this. Oh, that's scary. I'm gonna leave it just like this so when it comes up and smacks me in the face, you guys get a front row seat of it and get to laugh at me. Please don't smack me in the face. Also, don't break the ear off this thing either. That's too slow. So what's everybody working on? Because it's been a while since I've been talking to anybody, actually. I've been kind of off the map for a little bit. I'm talking to Jorge a little bit and a couple of the guys doing projects and stuff, but I've been uh, I've been a little bit slack. Got a lot on the go doing renovations and stuff. But, ugh, be nice. This is gonna work. Also, definitely, definitely drive these screws down with this electric impact because they're steel screws and soft aluminum housing with soft aluminum ears soft aluminum treads and it's just good for it uh, this is basically a bomb now all right so problem number one has been addressed and i say problem because when when you don't have ridiculous boost noises well, that's a problem. Or I should say, when you don't have ridiculous blow off noises or whatever. Although, I've never experienced those noises. Only blow off valves, which I don't like. Again, I'll say, I'll say it twice. band is ready. Hose is on. Dose pipes. Because this is dumb and I don't want to spend any money on it, I'm going to cut up my old fender exit from the Cadillac. I've only got one of these rubber boot things here, so I'm going to try to cut it in half with a wood saw. If anything, if anything comes out of this experiment, I say you can do it for cheap. Using rusty pipe, random rubber bushings that I cut out of a shop, and, well, a plumbing fitting. Mint. I actually think I figured out why they call it a dose pipe. Because there's two of them. Cool. Well, ugly plumbing fitting number one. Ugly plumbing fitting number two. 
Pipe. And let's not suck any of this metal shrapnel back into the turbo. <laughs> That'd be no fun. Work. The junk thing inside the pipe is sticking. Making it hard on me. Alrighty. This is gonna be so ridiculous. Look at that. Let's get a couple clamp boys on here. Oh, I cannot wait. Cannot wait to hear this. Just to see how ridiculous it is. Old people are gonna be so excited. They usually are very excited when I drive by like an idiot, I must say. I gotta try to make it look at least a little bit presentable. I also don't wanna paint my turbos, but. Dwayne is gonna powder coat my turbos for me at some point, actually. Dwayne, if you're watching this, we need to remember that. Black. Note to self, don't paint inside the turbo. Although paint is flammable. It's just the drying properties in it is not good for rings, valves. You know, the, those small, unimportant parts. I don't know why I put the garbage bag on it. Okay, first glance, looks ridiculous. Love it. Disclaimer, never done this before. Never tried it, saw it on the internet, and of course, who would lie on the internet? So we're gonna try it now. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Hopefully it goes tu -tu -tu -tu. Hopefully it doesn't go kaboom and blow my $200 turbos all over the highway. I've done that before. Let's, uh, let's try it. <laughs> So, so far, it doesn't seem to have made any sound at all. I don't know why. I assume it has something to do with these little holes in here. They are anti-surge holes that allows boost to bypass these uh, fins and come out through that hole so it doesn't surge. Hmm. I may have to revise this a little bit. I'm going to try it with no pipes and see if it sounds any different. I assume it won't, but it seems very quiet. Like there's no surge at all. Hmm. Well, oh, paint's dry anyway. That's something. I guess it got air dried. <laughs> Well, it seems like that didn't work either. The only next logical step is to block off those anti-surge holes. Might have to do a little bit of epoxying. I have a plan. 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 I have wire. There are holes. It barely fits. Like it's pretty tight. 
in some of them it's you know tighter than others uh, and I'm gonna cut those off three quarters of an inch and then I have these little screws that I'm gonna screw into the end of the wire to swell up the top and make it bigger and that'll hold it in there tight if I need to remove it I'll just pull it out is this shrapnel that could go in there absolutely are we gonna risk it absolutely so in case anybody was wondering uh, I'm mostly just doing this out of spite now and the results the results are not even something that I'm concerned about anymore. All right, let's see how terrible this works. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh boy, this is weird. Hmm. Oh, it's not moving. <laughs> I'm stumped. I have no idea what it is. It will not make the sound. The only other thing that I can think of is my pipes are too big. Because they were saying to have the pipes. I know. Look how ugly that is. That's disgusting. But none of the screws came out. Anyway, so what they were saying was have the pipes the same size as the outlet. Right now, my pipes are the same size as the whole turbo. Um, outer diameter thing so if my pipes were say two and a quarter inches or two and a half that might make the sound resonate through the smaller pipes more but i can't say for sure it's actually still pretty warm there so how am i going to downsize or neck that down to two and a quarter inches just to try it for a laugh i'm uh, uh brian's old coop yeah so how am i going to make that work i wonder Hmm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So I watched a video on the Australian guys doing a bunch of different dose pipes and I realized that they neck their turbo down to the inlet size. That makes all the sense now. That makes all the sense. So there's gonna be a part two of this video because I'm out of time and I don't have everything I need to do that. So I'm gonna pull all those screws and that wire back out again because I don't wanna eat that and blow up my engine. So for one, I have no idea why I put all those screws and that wire in there. I thought it would make it surge because it was anti-surge. I don't know, grill me. But if you have any input on why this may or may not work, whether it has anything to do with it being twin turbos, maybe twin turbos don't surge or stutter or flutter the way single turbo does. So give me your input. And also tell me why I'm dumb for doing this. And we will revisit this. Absolutely. I promise. I want it to go stu 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 Or at least make some ridiculous other sound. And uh, just, you know. I don't know. I just want to do something. Why not? I am going to leave the blow-off valve plug though. Because I just don't like the sound of a blow-off valve. So, I'm going to go pull this junk apart. And come up with a plan. See if I can find a reducer from 4 inch to 2.5. There's a tractor trailer coming. So, I'm going to cut this short. So thanks for watching, thanks for checking out the channel and the new subscribers, and have a great day everybody.